Porto Bikers, I'm Johnny Thompson from Fit for Racing, and in association with Downtime Podcast, I put together this video to show you how to stay mobile when you can't get out of the house. So Chris from Downtime Podcast asked me about how to increase your performance when you're stuck at home. And one of those things, this thing, is mobility. All of the rest of them that we spoke about are worth checking out. So visit Downtime Podcast and listen to the whole episode there. And you might really benefit from education around training at home. But for now, we're going to go through lots of mobility techniques so you can integrate that while you have time on your hands, while you're traveling, or while you don't have access to a gym. So first of all, we're going to take a look at ankles. Dorsiflexion, so that's your knee going over your toe, is really important, not just for training, but obviously for riding. We already did a video about how important it was to get flexible ankles. So check back on YouTube or fitforracing.com where you can see the article. But for today, we're just going to be looking at the how-to. So it's a nice and simple one, really, to start with. And it's putting as much pressure forwards on your knee as you can whilst keeping your heel on the ground. You can put both hands on. If you can, put your tummy or your chest onto your thigh and lean forwards. Sometimes I like to hold the ankle to push the heel down and you can also use that other hand on top of your knee. And you're gonna hold this position for two minutes each side. So that first one was with a bent knee. Now we're gonna stretch the ankle with a straight knee. This is gonna hit the calf a little bit different. Find something to wedge under the ball of your foot, keep your heel down still, and then push your knee back to straighten your leg, and then apply pressure downwards. You can even put a forward inclination on your torso to get more of a stretch. Once you've done both ankles, you should be better at holding a squat position here, which is gonna be the next position for opening hips. So what we wanna do is put elbows into knees, and then just rotate from side to side, just do this for about 30 seconds before moving on. It might be difficult if you've never got into this stretch before. So what you do is put your front foot on its outside and then walk your hands down until your shin hits the ground and then pop that back leg out as far as you can and then that might be enough for you. And what you can do then is put elbows down onto the ground or change position and you'll feel a different pull in different areas. So it might go up into your lower back, it might be into the front, into your groin, but wherever it's tight, spend more time. Once you've done that both sides, this is called the 90-90 position. This back leg is at 90 degrees, front leg is in the position that you were at just a second ago, and then you're gonna look over your back leg and then lean into it. Then, we're gonna go on all fours. Let's have a look this way. How's that? You're gonna spread your knees as far as you can with the inside of your feet on the ground. And then you're just gonna allow your hips to drop and feel the stretch. Again, you can hold that for two minutes. So that's hips opened and manipulated. Now we're gonna look at the muscles that are large that support those hips and drive some power. Quads and hip flexors, the, the muscles on the front of your legs and onto the inside, so adductors as well, these are all gonna be responsible for lower back pain, particularly if you get that pain whilst riding and pulling against the handlebars. It may well be that you sit down a lot all day and these become tight and they contribute to a bad position of your pelvis and therefore pull you out of position and your lower back takes the brunt of it and tightens up for safety. So if this is the first time you stretch your quads or you're just getting back into it, then I suggest you do this first. Hold the laces of your back foot, brace your middle, clench your butt at the back and pull forwards. So see how you feel on that before moving on to a more extreme stretch. In principle, the same position, but you get a little bit more weight forwards because of gravity and your body. So you're gonna grab your back foot and then from here, Bracing your middle so you're not overextending your spine. Bring your heel to your bum as far as you can. You'll feel that stretch. And then to intensify that stretch, clench your butt and subtly 
just opening the front hip there. If you've got no time, you're about to go riding, then you can do that same stretch standing up. So spend 30 seconds each side two or three times. So just before riding, it's important that you're not doing these lengthening stretches. You're more warming up your body so that then you're more capable to hold positions and produce power whilst you're riding. So just a note on that, that science will suggest that doing a stretch will reduce the power output of that muscle. However, what's very neglected in that statement is how important it is to be in good positions to train. So let's say you didn't stretch before a squat, then you don't have the same range and potentially you could put yourself in a dangerous position. So it would be much better and more beneficial to stretch to get into good positions and then reduce the power a little bit than just stay stiff and hit these things dry and then potentially injure yourself. Now we've done the quads, we're gonna look at the back of your leg. And this is gonna be with a belt. So everyone should have something they can wrap around. It could be a towel, whatever you like. I've got a belt here, it's nice and sturdy. And what we're gonna do is a bit of PNF stretching. So what we wanna do is hold a stretch at, it, at its limit whilst keeping your hip down. So we don't wanna stretch and get out of position because that looks more, but in reality, it's not any more than this. It's just a change in my lower back. So from here, pulling down, relax your head back down onto the floor. And then from there, for six seconds, you're gonna tighten up your hamstring and try and pull your heel down whilst res resisting with the belt. So we're gonna go tight for one, two, three, four, five, six, and then relax deeper into a stretch. So while we relax into this stretch, it's important that you do nice fluid breathing. So the breathing is important to then relax in and teach your muscle that it's safe to be there. So once you've done the breathing for 30 seconds, you can then, in this newfound position, go tight again for six seconds, and then go longer still. You do that three times, it makes massive differences to flexibility, particularly in hamstrings, this is a good movement. So once you've done your hips and your legs, you might find that these positions are better anyway. So we work this way around and you'll feel a difference as you go, getting into better positions. So this one's nice and simple. You're gonna grab your heels and then pull yourself down and this will stretch your lower back. You can also, once you're there, raise your hands over your head. We start putting a little bit into the lats to stretch out there. Then we'll get a little extra benefit on the hamstrings and glutes through the shoulders in a down dog position. This is good on its own, but what we really want here is this cobra position. So be very careful here that you're not forcing it. So it might put pressure on an extended spine and you might feel a nipping in there. So if that's the case, lie flat on the ground with your hands down and just raise up, keeping your lower rib on the ground. Try not to come up from your hips as well. And then you try and raise to this position here. A nice controlled breathing will help your body relax into that position. So that's round the midline done. And then we're gonna work up into those funky shoulders. So what we're gonna do is start on the back just by opening that scapula. So shoulder blade at the back, you're gonna cross your hand over your chest. And then from there, relaxing your shoulder as much as you can. So it's important that in these positions, you relax into it and you don't fight it. So you're not absolutely ripping it. That's not gonna do you any good. It's not a Van Damme movie. What we're trying to do is gently manipulate into end range, so that means as far as it'll go, each of your limbs, so then your body gets used to being in those positions and each time you make a little bit more progress towards it. Not strapping yourself between palm trees and ripping yourself in half one time and thereafter you can do the splits. So once you've done that, we're gonna work down into the lats. 
So we had a little sample before when we were in this double-handed position, but this time we're gonna go single-handed. So what we're gonna do is a karate chop style hand position, and then we can push the other arm through and then really drop down. And you'll feel that in your lats. Lats and pec minor are really important to loosen up for that good position overhead. Once we've done a little of the lat, we can maybe put the arm in a better position to be able to reach down your back. So what you wanna do here is with the other hand, grab your elbow and gently pull it down. So this will open the lats as well as the triceps, reaching down as far as you can, bracing your middle so you're not in an overextended position. So that's lats, triceps done. We also want the pec. So you can lie flat for this and reach an arm out and gently rotate. So you push your other arm into the ground and rotate through. What we want to do here is just keep that arm stretched straight out. So actively pushing away from you. This arm is rotating through your core or your torso. So then apply pressure into your pec. You can do that in a door frame and that works pretty well because you can control through the door frame and feel that stretch and go as far as you need to on it. Doing your front delts is also very important. So again, with your belt, a band, what you're gonna do is put that behind you over your back, then grab it and then gently pull that up with your spare hand and just relax down into it. But if you want more of a stretch, you can tilt your head to the opposite side. And that'll be a good stretch up into the back of your neck. Often a cause of pain and tension headaches, particularly if you've got tight traps or bad rounded forward positions. And what we don't want is your neck tension to then affect the rest of your body and actually your mood. So what you might find is you're in a bad mood and you don't even know why. You do a few stretches and open out and your body position really helps your mind stay positive. I know that sounds a little bit spiritual or zen, but in reality, it works. So if you do find yourself stuck at home, working hard or doing nothing at all, either way, and you're just in a bit of a funky mood, then do some stretches and see how it feels. So wrist mobility, super crucial. It's important that you really go to your level and don't go beyond that. So we're not ripping these muscles, as we said earlier, we're just gently manipulating. So a nice, simple stretch either side with fingers back and then even more careful the other direction. So the back of your hand on the ground, either way. That's pretty much every part of your body stretched out. What I do like to do though, is do some big whole body movements, which will really help fire you up and get you more functional. Let's try and get into a deep squat. And what you're gonna do is reach as high as you can. So this rotation is gonna be super good. And if you see, I've got some imbalance, so I'm not as good on that side as I am this. So a good indicator that I need to work a little bit more on this side. And then moving on, back to the down dog and cobra position. Actually, dive bomber or Indian press-ups will load the shoulders, but will also really help your mobility. So this is a massive movement, but it's not just strengthening of the press-up, but really opening shoulders and hips. And the final massive movement that I've got for you is the Jefferson squat. So I just happen to have a bike pump. But you can use a broomstick, anything in between. So what you wanna do is have your front hand facing outwards that way and your back hand facing backwards. And then from there, keeping your chest as high as you can, squat down and try and rotate those knees out as far as possible forcing and dropping the hips whilst keeping your chest high. Come back up and then back down. Three seconds at the bottom, back up and then swap hands. 
And although it doesn't look that much difference, the rotation through your torso is gonna make a big difference. So that's really forcing the external rotation through those hips, and it's gonna be fantastic for an overall hip mobility. So those three massive movements at the end are really good. You can do those standalone or any of the other parts. I hope that you do integrate some of this mobility into your routine and find the benefits when you're back to a full gym or back on your bike. Strength and conditioning is our thing at Fit for Racing, so visit fitforracing.com and on there, there's programs for all kinds of levels of rider and equipment, all the way down to full body weight only programs. So if you're stuck at home, then at least you can be doing some strength and conditioning to contribute to becoming a better rider on the other end. Until next time, peace.